Hello, in this demo, I'll show you how we can implement um, an application which is going to be a SOAP service that will be consumed in an asynchronous manner. As you know, with SOAP services, we can execute either a request response, which is a synchronous call, when we call a service and we wait for the response to get on the same connection, that's a request response. But moreover, um, in the enterprise world, when we call a service, the service will execute uh, a, a workflow, and that can take time, and we can exceed the timeout of, a, of the HTTP connection. So basically, with enterprise services, we need to call them and consume them in an asynchronous manner. So the other options we can call a server will, will be a one-way invocation in which we deliver the, the call, but we don't wait to actually extract the response from the call. Because we use HTTP as transport protocol, of course, we will receive the status that the server accepted our call but we will not pass the response uh, body. So we don't expect to have something in the body with a one-way invocation. Still, we need to be able to be notified with a notification response by the server. That means that when we call the service in a one-way manner, we register an endpoint where to get a response later on. So this is another option that we can execute services in this way, totally asynchronous. Still, we can combine the synchronous and the synchronous call in, in this way. We can do a call, which from the functional perspective, it's a one-way call, but instead we get an idea of the request of the process that has been created when we perform the call. So uh, the third option, which I'm telling you about now, is we execute a call, get an ID, and then do a polling from time to time with that ID to check whether or not the response is ready to be taken uh, for the request that we sent before. So this is how we can actually consume SOAP services, either synchronous, either pure asynchronous or a mix. What I'm trying to um, point out with this, it's how we can consume web services in a totally asynchronous manner by using a protocol that's called web services addressing. Web services addressing, it's intended to, uh, to support message relay from one endpoint to another. So when we perform a call with web services addressing, we, first of all, each message will have a message ID so that when I send a request, later on when I get the response, I will know that the response correlates to this request. So each message will have a message ID and in case we respond asynchronously to a previous request, we uh, use a correlation ID in the header to say this response correlates to this request. Then another headers that we should use are reply to and fall to. The reply to it's used to deliver the response asynchronously uh, in case the operation succeeded, but the fault to will deliver asynchronously the exception when something went wrong while executing the request. So to put it simple, this is how it works. Let me just try to explain it one by one. First of all, uh, I have a simple uh, scenario in here, which is a pure hello world. And I started by defining a contract uh, because I think you, are not able to see it very well. Let me just adjust the font for you. Sorry for having to do that, 
that during the demo, but I think 20 should be more readable. Okay, nevertheless. So, um, here I have a contract with the simplest method that I can write. It's a hello world that's going to say hello to a given name. I annotate the contract with the web service annotation and I also annotate the method that's going to be executed remotely via SOAP. And I say that the method should be executed one way without waiting for the response. That means that my method cannot return anything other than void. Now, I need to have um, a callback contract defined. So this contract will be actually invoked by the service to deliver the response to the client, to the originated client. This is also a, a web service that's going to be implemented on, on the client side. We'll have only one method that should be annotated as a web method. And this will be invoked in, an, in a one-way manner by the service on the server to the client service. I just call this on say hello, and this will be used to deliver the response, which in my case it's a string to the previous method. So this method is split it in half. This is the beginning of the execution with which I deliver the arguments, and this will start the process on the server side. But later the server will respond by calling me this method on the client service with the response that got obtained after executing the method. Then what I, what I have to do is to implement a service on the server side, which we're going to implement the direct contract. And I need to annotate the service somehow. First of all, I need to control what's going to be the name of the service because I need to generate consumers just by searching in the contract of the service for that name. So uh, as you may see here, I just uh, control the service name, the port name, also the target namespace for the service in the whistle. And I say this service is implementing the contract from uh, that I defined earlier. Now, I'm going to use web services addressing, so I activate this by annotating with addressing annotation. That's going to be a required header. Now, um, my method should contact back the, back the client. So I have two options for getting the relay endpoint. One option would be to, web, to use a web param. I can have a parameter on that method annotated with web param saying that this is going to be taken from the header and from the name of the header that is replied to. Still, if I choose to do in that way, then the client won't be able to call the method directly because it's going to it won't be able to actually provide with the header. So I need to define another interface on top of my contract interface just to get rid of the web param from the signature of the method. And when the service will be executed by the container on the server side, it will still inject the value of the parameter by taking it from the header of the incoming request. If I would choose to do this way, then I would have an intermediary level uh, being the contract that's going to be the one that gets implemented by the server on the server side, the service on the server side, but the client won't call this directly. So I chose not to do so, but rather I prefer to uh, have the context injected for the call. I annotate a private field in my class with resource, and this will lead me to the web service context of the call. In order to obtain a reference to the service that the client will uh, set as the address of the reply to header, I need to do some manjo jumbo with this. 
um, this is um, some magic that we need to inject doesn't look very well but still I can take the context of the call and get the message context this will be a map with properties passed from the incoming the incoming message I then can take from the map a key which has the value of this constant is the the address for the reply to and this is actually a web service endpoint reference but then I need to create a client reference which is a W3C endpoint reference and this can be obtained with a builder I create a builder and I need to configure the builder I need to say what's going to be the name of the service when it will download the whistle I need to search for the service with the appropriate name and that's going to be in the target namespace this is the reason I set the target namespace here to be able to control it and search for the service within the target namespace later but this is not actually the server on the serv the service on the server side it is the one on the client side so I will have a service on the client side with the same target namespace not necessarily the same as the one on the server but I just use the same target namespace as the name of the company I, I work for and this is uh, the name of the service that the client is publishing then I need to set up the endpoint where to invoke the service and my reference taken from the header from the reply to element is gonna have an address and this is, is actually where the service should be consumed and then I need to set the location of the whistle and this is um, with respect to the address of the service and the query parameter for the whistle after setting all this I built my W3C endpoint reference and this client reference knows to provide me with an implementation for a contract and I ask to provide me with a proxy to be able to call the callback contract methods and with that proxy I then call the on say hello method which will contact back the client on the endpoint that the client uh, has registered via the reply to header and I'm gonna deliver the response of the method the synchronously as you may see it says servus and the name of the uh, user that means hello to that user so this is the service on the server side I'm gonna publish this with a console application and that's gonna be a quite straightforward publishing I hard code the the URL on which I should publish publish the service even with the local host doesn't matter for the demo purposes I use the endpoint class of Metro framework that's implementing uh, web service SOAP services in Java and I publish at that endpoint a singleton instance of my service I just output some some something in the console telling that the service is listening on that endpoint and the, the user may enter a command to stop the service and then I just read commands from the command line and with the exit command I stop the entire process now on the client side first of all I need to implement the callback service and the callback service will only output in the console the message that's going to be received from the server I also need to specify what is the name of the service because I'm using this to search for the service when I call it back from the uh, server on service on the server side and I also specify the name of the port the target namespace and what is the interface that we implement I said that we use WS addressing in here and I override the method which will keep the annotation to be invoked as a web method and in a one-way manner the method only outputs the message received from the server now I create a client my client is going to be a console as well I need to publish uh, a service and I need to keep the reference 
to that service which is going to be the one that we put in the reply to header. So, I publish with the endpoint class by calling the publish method on this endpoint. This is going to be a different port because I'm running on the same machine. I then publish a singleton instance of the callback service and take the endpoint reference at that service. Then I create a proxy First of all, I take I create a service to be able to uh, invoke the service on the server, and this is the URL where I found the whistle of that service, and I search within this whistle for a service called like so, and I control the name when I publish the service, and within this target namespace, and with this service I then take a proxy, I create a proxy to call one given port and this is the port that I like to consume and it's the one that the service is exposing. So here I get a proxy to be able to consume the service. I like to have an implementation of my direct contract but be careful when I create the proxy I also need to attach the addressing functionality and the one way. So I say, please provide me with a proxy that knows to inject and handle uh, web services addressing headers by requiring this feature, feature to, be to be available. And also I need to be able to do one way invocations. When creating, when referencing the feature for one way calls, I also need to specify what should be uh, the callback endpoint on which I should be contacted by the server. So each time I do a one-way invocation, the combination of addressing and one-way will inject a header called reply to and fold to with the value of that reference, where I published uh, an active service on the client side. Then I just uh, tell the user to enter a name to be uh, uh, greeted by the server and I read a command from the console and if the command equals to exit I stop the client otherwise I call the server. So as you may see my call is receiving nothing from the server because this method will return void. But when the, the method gets executed on the server side, the method will take back the client reference as it was sent by the reply to header. And then it will create a proxy to be able to invoke, to consume methods um, defined by the callback contract of the service running on the client. And then it executes a method to the client. So the method will be executed on the client side and it will print the message. Now let me just um, start the server first and there's going to be a console. Just run the server as a Java application. And this is saying you may uh, download the wisdom from this location and stuff like that. Now um, we can inspect the wisdom and we will see that the web service is addressing it's a policy required by the wisdom. Let me just continue with demonstrating the, the functionality. Now let me just start the client. That's also a console application. And it says please enter some, something. Okay. And if I enter um, Gula, for instance, what you see here, it's intercepting the calls. The way I did that, it's quite simple. I activated this, and if I go to the run configurations, I also already defined the configurations. On the server, I pass some arguments to the virtual machine. You cannot read them easily um, because of the font, but Nevertheless, they are activating the HTTP dump on the server and on the client as well with the same values. So even for the incoming messages uh, or the outgoing messages, this will work. And what you see here, it's actually the first request that the client sent to the server. So this request, 
if I then copy this value of the payload, first of all, you see that I'm calling the say hello method identified by this URL for the SOAP action. It's using SOAP 1.1, the action is actually a custom HTTP header, and in the body I have the payload. Now, if I create a, if I will create a, a new XML document just to be able to see it in a formatted way, and then I, I just paste that and go to the end and uh, just delete the delimiter for the message, Come on, so this will become a valid um, XML document. If I then see the grid of it and go inside, I see that in my header I have a tool which is identifying the method I'm calling and an action and I also have a reply to. So the value of the reply to is actually, let me just use the splitter to see it better. So the value of the reply to is an address which points to the service, the callback service that we published on the client. Now, if I go back here, you see that the client is calling in a one-way manner the server method. And the response was just uh, 202, which, is, which stands for accepted. So I got nobody for the response. The result, the method that I'm calling returns void, so nothing. But the call has been accepted. Now this is the second call that uh, is displayed by the client console. This time the server is calling back the client. So this is the SOAP action that the server is trying to call. The, the, the method is from the callback contract and it's called on say hello. And this is actually the result in the body that the server is sending back to the client in a pure asynchronous manner. So if I then copy this and then put it in Oxygen editor, just to be able to see. Uh, this is invalid because of the delimiter uh, of the delimiter in the end. But let me just come on. Let me just uh, delete that for you. Sorry, I'm using the part of my uh, my Mac and not that uh, great with the editor. But nevertheless, so now it's a valid XML document. And if I load the grid, you may see that I have. Uh, of course, I have a body, and the body is the result of the um, of the method on say hello, and this is actually the the text servus gulo. But I also have some headers. In this case, I'm missing the correlation ID because I don't inject it. Normally, I should put the correlation ID which is going to be the message ID of the request. So in this way, the client will know to, uh, to match the response with the original request in case it needs to continue the workflow on the client side. But nevertheless, uh, the server is still able to deliver the message asynchronously, even though the message doesn't say to the client, this is the response for your initial request. So what I tried to show you with this demo, which is quite humble, um, is the following. And of course, if I would go in here and I will uh, inspect the server log, you will see that the server has only one request. And this is the request that was received from the client. The client is trying to invoke the say hello method with the headers and so on that you saw also on the client side. This is what the server responds to that. Um, and then the server is contacting the client to actually request the execution of the on say hello method with the response that was in this case, the response was part of the body of the uh, initial request. And if I will take this XML, which is the body, you will see the response, it's, it's here. So basically, just to recap the steps, 
in order to use WS addressing in a pure asynchronous manner, because there is another way in which you are doing an uh, anonymous anonymous call, but just to to do a pure asynchronous call, you need first of all to define a contract of the service on the server, and you will have only one methods invoked in one way manner. So your methods will return void. But then you need to have a callback contract implemented by a service on the client side with one way invoked methods as well. Returning void, it makes no sense to return to a return message in this case. So the server will actually, um, when the client will invoke a method of the service contract, the server will contact back the client to deliver the response of that method. So instead of, have, of having a synchronous request response call with a method returning the actual result of your uh, remote method, you will have to split the method in half. This one will return a void and it will accept the call to, to start processing it. And the second one will be used to deliver the response. So it will return void and it will receive the result as the only argument. You may pass some other, some additional information to, to that, but mainly the, this method has to receive an argument of the type of the response. So that's all. Thanks for watching.